Species. With the 2024 Player's Handbook, we have 10 species that we can play around with. Today, we're going to go through all of them, and I'll be sharing my opinion how powerful each one is. Welcome to Pack Tactics, where kobolds are the best. By the way, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm in the book. I can't show it yet. Originally, I was going to make a tier list about the species, but after going through all of the species, I realized that the power gap between options is a lot smaller now than they've ever been before. And this largely has to do with everyone getting a feat at level 1. And of course, the changes to feats in general. So I believe I can't really do a tier list because everybody's going to be in the same tier row. And that kind of defeats the purpose of a tier list. Now obviously this species is better than that species. But for the most part, this is really balanced. And I'm very impressed by that. So what I'm going to do instead is just a regular ranking. And before we start, let me be 100% clear because I'm on the internet. You can play whatever you want. This is your character. I am just ranking things. I'm gonna start from the worst species and then go up, okay? So, first one is Halfling. I'm not gonna read every feature like I usually do. I'm just gonna talk about the highlights. Everything is on screen, you can read it. So, compared to the old version, Halflings and other species have gotten a very important buff. They can now move 30 feet instead of 25. While something like a mount could mostly remove this downside, it's definitely a welcoming change. And now I don't need to listen to dwarf players complain about their speed. I've played with a lot of them, and they do it every single time. And I tell them every time, like, get a riding horse, it's 60 feet. And they're like, no. I don't want to ride a horse. These horses just die. They have 13 HP. Kobold, stop being toxic. Gator, I'm not being toxic. I'm just trying to help them. Anyways, back to halflings. Their features are not great. They don't have dark vision. They get naturally stealthy, which helps with hide, which is cool, but it's not really that useful. Brave is really good in a dragon campaign, but other than that, it's very situational. And lastly, there's halfling nimbleness and luck. This is their best feature and is really why you play them, but it's not that good. At a similar level, but a bit higher, is Orcs. Orc, Orc, Orc. You eat soup with a fork! No, Gator, you eat with a spoon. Anyways, the Orc species is quite similar to the one in Monsters of the Multiverse. They lost their powerful build feature, I don't know why. It doesn't change that much, but still, I would like to have it. Their dark vision was buffed by a lot. From 60 feet to 120 feet. Outranging enemies vision is incredibly good, as it means you are completely immune to features that require sight. And attacks made against you have disadvantage, while you shoot with advantage. Adrenaline Rush, a couple of bonus action dashes with some temp HP, is pretty good with melee marshals. Well, to be fair, it's pretty good for anybody, really. You could be a wizard who dashes into cover, you know? You can also use this for kiting and so on. And then Restless Endurance is like a free death ward. It's not really that good in melee because one, you're probably swarmed, and two, most enemies have multi-attack. Another thing to note is it's not like the halfling luck where it comes up all the time. This comes up when you screw up somewhere. So if you play super well, this will never come up. And I really do hope it never comes up for you. But yeah, anyways, Adrenaline Rush, Dark Vision, and Relentless Endurance is way better than anything Halfling gets. And I have to say, Great Dark Vision is something a lot of people sleep on. Next, Tiefling. I had a hard time ranking Tiefling and Orc. I've decided that Tieflings are better. Instead of their 2014 counterpart, their damage resistance is now based on their fiendish legacy. Every damage type has something to say for it, and having resistance is quite useful. However, their spells kind of suck. I think Tieflings are carried by its resistance, dark vision, and ability to be small now. The reason why small size is good has to do with mount options, and some spells are more effective when you're small, like minor illusion, for example. I think it's very interesting that humans, tieflings, and Asimar can be medium or small size in 2024. You can flavor your tiefling into like a halfling tiefling. Maybe people will think you're an imp or something. Kobold, shush, we might get in trouble! Oh, yeah, sorry. So, 
The poison resistance is really good for early game and mid game. And fire resistance is good at late, mid game, and end game. As for the necrotic, it's not really that good unless you play in an obvious undead campaign. Or something like Curse of Strahd. That's when you pick that. The only real highlight here for the spells is Abyssal gets Hold Person and Infernal gets Darkness. Both of these are once per day casts, and then you can spend spell slots if you want to. You cast Darkness when there's, for example, Pack Tactics. You cast Hold Person when, well, whenever you feel like it, really. Hellish Rebuke from Infernal as a once per day free cast is a pretty decent defense, too. Overall, I don't think you should look at the spells too much. You should just focus on the resistances. Oh, you're playing Mines of Fendelver. There's a green dragon on the cover of the book. <laughs> Pick poison. <laughs> Next, Asimar. Unlike Tieflings, they get resistance to two damage types rather than one. And they get dark vision. And they can be small. Unfortunately, the resistances is to necrotic damage and radiant damage. Now, necrotic does pop up once in a while in every single campaign. But the radiant one is rare. I think their healing is really whatever, as it's only 2d4 to 6d4 healing each day. Of course, it helps someone get off the ground and it's an extra resource but it's not that great. Celestial Revelation looks similar to what Asimar got before, but the feature text was cleaned up a bit. It gives you at least 2 to 4 extra DPR, assuming you hit at least once each round. But this also costs a bonus action, so if you do any damage with your bonus action, you're in the negative at the start. And now their best feature, Heavenly Wings. This is Flight for one minute, once per long rest. You can't really default kill a lot of things with this, so I think you'll be using this as more of like a utility or emergency. Still though, lots of points to flying. I can't believe they didn't change Inner Radiance. You are a creature within 10 feet of yourself, so each round you take damage too. I think Jeremy many years ago has gone on record to say that this is not intentional, but still it hasn't changed. He probably forgot. Regardless Regardless, even your allies are hit by this. If we assume two enemies, we're only doing four extra damage per round at low levels, and 12 at late levels. This is awful. Finally, there's Necrotic Soul, which is an AoE Frighten effect. It's quite nice, uh, a little bit too small, so I recommend picking the flight every single time. Next is Dwarf. Like Orcs, they have greater range for their Dark Vision, which is really nice, and their Dwarven Resilience will likely come up a lot. It's resistance to poison, and you have advantage on saving throws you make to avoid or end the poison condition. Two times better than the Tiefling one, and you're gonna be really good at drinking competitions at bars. And that's without cheating. The extra HP isn't crazy, but of course I'm not gonna say no to them. And finally, Tremor Sense can be useful to locate creatures. I don't believe it cancels out stealth, and it doesn't count as seeing creatures. So you still have disadvantage on attacks. Overall, I rate their incredible resistance and dark vision together quite highly, but I could very well see them being a bit worse at certain tables. Next, Gnomes. Uh, gnomes suck. They're very bad. If you play gnomes, you should unsubscribe. Kobold, why are you being so mean? Gator, I'm a kobold, and I'm still really mad at them for what they did to Curdle Mac. But fine, you know, I'll be objective about this. So the lineage options are kind of a meme. I don't think any of them are potent. They're just whatever. But their small size, dark vision, and especially gnomish cunning are super good. The old gnomish cunning was advantage on all intelligence wisdom and charisma saving throws against magic. In this version, it got boosted to any mental saving throw, and it doesn't have to be magic. That is really, really strong. Things that force a mental save are incredibly deadly and will take you out of a fight. And if you play at late game, this comes up all the time. So it's a fantastic feature for endgame. Next, Goliath. Something very important to know is that they do not have dark vision. They do, however, have 35 foot movement speed, which is super duper good for everyone, really. Their giant ancestry might seem insane, but it's, it's not really that crazy. 
as you only use them a few times per day. But there are some really good options here, like the movement reduction option is really good with Ray of Frost, Slow Mastery Property, or Repelling Blast. Other good ones is Cloud's Jaunts that lets you teleport, and Hill's Tumble, which makes people prone. My favorite is Frost's Chill, just because of the damage increase and the speed reduction. And it's really easy to stack with other things. Some of the options suck though, like Stone's Endurance or Storm's thunder. Additionally, they have large form, and that can potentially be really powerful if you have access to oversized weapons. But I have no idea how that will work, because the DMG isn't out yet. But even without it, your speed increases by 10 feet. So that's another speed buff. That's 45 foot speed total. You're really fast. And finally they get powerful builds. I don't know why orcs don't get this anymore. Anyways, Goliath is good because of the speed increase and their ancestry options. All right, top three. Number three is Elf. Similar to Tieflings, they have three different options. Drow, High Elf, and Wood Elf. Drow and Wood Elf has the most powerful options. Drow has increased dark vision, while Wood Elf has increased speed. Wood Elf is better than Drow, because they get Pass Without Trace. Even though Surprise is nerfed, Pass Without Trace is still incredibly good. You're basically potentially giving everyone advantage on initiative rolls. I'll talk more about Pass Without Trace in another video. Elf is quite nice, like even if you don't pick Drow, they still get dark vision of 60 feet. Fey Ancestry is pretty strong because effects that inflict charm condition usually include worse effects. And Keen Senses gives you Perception, which is the best skill in the game. Well, actually less so now because Surprise has been nerfed. As for Trans, it can be convenient, as it adds more hours in the day for things like Scribing Scrolls, which is really important, you should do that. I think from an early point of view, if you play with the 2024 Player's Handbook, book only, you would want at least one Wood Elf in your party. I still believe Pass Without Trace to this day is still just so incredibly important for optimization. And playing Wood Elf just gives you this. You don't have to play Ranger or Druid to get Pass Without Trace. You just play Wood Elf. Next, number two, Dragonborn. Ooh, I'm so happy Dragonborn is so high up. This really makes me wag my tail. I really want to play these guys. Tons of resistance options options and dark vision are very useful features. And the breath weapon does good damage. Assuming two targets, you will basically always be better off using the breath weapon. Especially at low levels when you're not doing a lot of damage through weapons. It's incredible at low levels. And even at late levels, when you're facing a lot of trash mobs, this can be really good. And by the way, you can choose shapes for this. It can either be a 15 foot cone or a 30 foot line. And you pick every single time you use the breath weapon. I don't think there's a single blast spell in the game that does something like that. There is a downside to all of this though. Your resistance and damage outputs are shared. So if you pick white for example, you get cold resistance and a cold breath. Now you might be wondering, what's the best Dragonborn type? Well, it's red and gold, because fire. Enemies that deal fire damage is common. And dealing fire damage in general is really good. Ah, plant monster, vulnerable to fire, burn him. And finally we get to the best feature. Once per long rest, for 10 minutes they can fly. That's a really long time, that can last multiple encounters. This lasts as long as spirit guardians. Kubold, you mentioned spirit guardians in every single video now. I'm sorry, but I really like Spirit Guardians. Anyways, I really love this Dragonborn. They're like big kobolds. Is that a Baldur's Gate 3 reference? Um, maybe. Well, anyways, we're at number one, human. They can be the size of kobolds now, which is really funny and is really strong. They get heroic inspiration once per long rest, which is a reroll to basically any d20 roll you do. That's both useful defensively and offensively. It's like a 2014 lucky point. Super good. They get an extra proficiency, heck yeah, that can be Arcana, Stealth 
health or perception. And finally, they get their best feature, Versatile, which gives you an extra origin feat. In the past, there was only two races in the game that got a feat. But now every species get a feat at level 1. And you get an extra one. Now, origin feats are not as crazy as general feats. But I still believe this species is overall stronger than any other option. The closest to this is Dragonborn with its flights, which is really good. But its effect in default killing and traversal can be replicated in many accessible ways. An extra feat, however, while there are plenty of good ones like I mentioned in my last video, you'll always get something out of those feats. And that's it, that's everything. As I said in the beginning, the power gap is really not that huge anymore. So, play whatever you want. That's really fun. I might be playing Dragonborn. Scaly! Anyways, you guys might want to check out my Patreon because you get early videos, which means more stuff in the player's handbook. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I earned your subscription, maybe a like. A dislike is fine too, by the way. Like, if you like gnomes, you know. Listen, if you like gnomes, you shouldn't be watching my videos. They're bad people. Shut up, Kubo! Oh, uh, okay, fine. Um, bye-bye!